everybody, we're going to talk about a very important topic here, and that is TTP. This is commonly tested on your exam, so you'll want to be familiar with this one. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or in the i button in the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions that I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. Definitely subscribe to my channel and you'll get notifications every time I put a new video up. Okay, this looks like a big slide and it is, but this is pretty much... Um, this is most of what you need to know. So TTP is a rare and life-threatening microangiopathy, and it's got this classic pentad. However, most patients are not gonna have all of these. So you do not have to have all of these to di diagnose TTP. So microangiopathic hemolytic anemia will cause jaundice, icterus, dark urine, and fatigue. Basically what's happening here is that you have clots, as we're going to see happens, and those clots will shear the red cells and it will um, destroy them, which is going to cause them to release hemoglobin into the bloodstream, which then gets metabolized to bilirubin. Consumption thrombocytopenia, because the platelets are all sticking together, um, you will have a, even though you've got a lot of platelets in your bloodstream, they're all stuck together, they can't work, and so you can't clot where you need to. Um, so look for platelet-type bleeding. A fever can be present, renal dysfunction can be present, and there can be neurological abnormalities. The most common presenting symptoms are really nonspecific, so for things like weakness, anorexia, nausea, vomiting. Um, sometimes this can be due to the underlying cause. Um, however, uh, you will usually appreciate this based on um, either labs or if they come in with a more specific uh, feature. Uh, but if you have a patient who's got weakness and uh, anorexia and, you know, they're just not feeling good, you're probably going to be getting a CBC and you'll start to suspect it on CBC. Mortality can be anywhere from 20 to 90 percent without treatment. So this is really an emergency. Um, now, the mechanism of how this works, you need to know for step one, uh, step two and three, not so much important. But basically, we have this metalloproteinase, this enzyme called Adam TS13. And um, what this is responsible for doing, it's a metalloproteinase, so it breaks down proteins. And the protein that it breaks down are these von Willebrand factor multimers. And so, as you know, von Willebrand factor helps make a nice big clot. And then Adam TS13 comes in and breaks that down, which we wanna do, we wanna have a balance. Well, if you don't have the Adam TS13 working properly, you'll form clots with the von Willebrand factor, but you uh, won't be able to break them down. And so you'll have this, uh, this consumptive thrombocytopenia. You don't have the uh, free platelets to uh, work where you need them to work. Um, now it can be hereditary, but that's pretty rare, only about 1% of cases. And that's due to a genetic defect of Adam TS13. As you can imagine, these patients are gonna have episodes of TTP throughout their life, or it can be acquired. And there's a number of ways that that can happen, uh, but that's due to antibodies to this enzyme. Now the causes of acquired TTP um, is, uh, I'm sorry, this should be hereditary. Um, so um, that's 1%. Uh, the big one that commonly gets tested, especially if you're dealing with a child, is E. coli 0157H7, causes shigatoxin, okay. Uh, connective tissue disorders can be drug-induced, particularly clopidogrel and some of those antiplatelet drugs. Uh, can be due to malignancy, can be associated with some OB uh, conditions, and then some infections. Uh, the big one, though, you need to remember is the E. coli 0157H7. I should say that's shiga-like toxin. And it, I believe it can also happen with shiga toxin, too, which would be a salmonella infection. I should have included that on here. Okay, workup, we'll get a CBC with peripheral smear, BMP, because we have bleeding, I always get a PT, PTT. Liver function tests would be useful as well here because a lot of these patients come in jaundiced. And then optionally, if you have a picture that looks like a hemolytic anemia, you can get your LDH and haptoglobin in your analysis as usual. If you have a patient with neurosymptoms, make sure to include a head CT. That goes for anyone with neurosymptoms. This is what it looks like, thrombocytopenia. Um, you'll have the uh, elevated bilirubin, 
Um, and schistocytes, that's a classic picture for microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, uh, and uh, that is what we're dealing with here. Our further workup, we want to get the ADMTS13. That is going to be much more specific for TTP, and that will be low. So our management, um, there's a number of things that we can do. It just depends on how emergent the case is. So plasma exchange, corticosteroids, remember this is usually antibody mediated, uh, IV fluids, um, then we start to look at the possible causes. So HIV, hepatitis, make sure you uh, investigate these patients, especially if they're a young woman for potential uh, connective tissue disorders and then consult hematology. Now we talked, this is antibody mediated, so what's a good drug to go for? Rituximab. Why? Because it's a, a, an inhibitor of CD20, which is on our B cells. B cells make uh, antibodies, so we can go for that. Um, do not administer antibiotics for the infection. You'll. Uh, this is usually commonly associated with an infection. If you start killing that bacteria, um, you can make it worse. Uh, do not transfuse platelets, okay? You'll just cause more clotting, more shearing of the red cells. You'll just make it worse. 